Welcome to Rome. This is The Bittersweet Life with Katie Sewell and Tiffany Parks. Hello, this is The Bittersweet Life. I'm Katie Sewell. I'm Tiffany Parks. Tiffany over in Rome, Katie in Seattle, and it's 2024, and we're going to put us ourselves through the annual gauntlet of revisiting what our resolutions were for last year and making new ones for this year, which is an interesting yearly practice to do, and, and one that I think is unique to radio in some ways, because you can make a list of the resolutions you want to do every year and revisit that list, but there is another thing that's about being able to hear yourself say it, and then having to like re-listen <laughs> to how you said it and what you intended to do, and then decide whether or not you actually accomplished that mission during the course of 2023. Mm -hmm. It's excruciating, really. Well, for brand new listeners, we should probably lay out how we actually approach resolutions in general. So my general approach, I don't like making big resolutions like I'm going to lose 20 pounds this year. I just don't like making huge pronouncements like that. I don't like huge major life goals. What I like to try to do is do something that's a minor thing that might tweak how I live my life going forward. That's my main thing. Now, that said, I did make a big pronouncement last year, which we will revisit in this particular episode. <laughs> but I, So I think we're going to do what? I have maybe three resolutions planned for next year. They're varying degrees of like how much they're going to take. But none of them are like, I'm going to change my entire way of being this year. What's your approach? Yeah, my longtime listeners know that I'm pretty ambitious when it comes to... Uh, New Year's resolutions. And I think one or two years in there, I did really well. So it does happen that I am successful, more or less, with my resolutions. But I feel, I don't know if this is accurate, but I feel like I usually fail. I do those big new resolutions, and I'll keep up a resolution for like three months, mm -hmm. three or four months. But then eventually, I run out of steam. Or the other thing that I do wrong is I make a resolution, but I don't make any kind of strategy to accomplish it. Right. So I just <laughs> write this thing down. And then I'm like, you know, I look at it a year later, I was like, how did I even expect myself to do that? Like, it's like, <laughs> for example, if you say, you know, I want to run a marathon, and you never go tr training, you know, right. <laughs> you never go running. How are you going to run a marathon if you don't train regularly? So I feel like that is my stumbling block. So this year, I'm going to be pretty easy. on. I was pretty easy on myself last year, though, I got to say. Um, I'm going to go with that again. Um, be pretty easy on myself, but I do want your help with one. Okay. Um, maybe the last one. Okay. And, well, and one thing I also want to ask you and also mention, I mean, I guess the first thing I want to ask you is, how do you feel when you fail? Because personally, if I fail at something, it's not really that big of a deal to me. You know, I want to do it as a self-challenge, but yeah. I don't really care. Yeah, I, I'm, I feel fortunate because I'm one of those people who is pretty easy on myself. I do challenge myself and I do like to set goals. I'm goal oriented and I'm, I'm relatively ambitious. I don't have a problem being like, okay, I didn't do so great. Whatever. I'll do better next time. Like I'm, I'm pretty resilient as far as that's concerned, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, one other thing I wanted to mention, because I, for people who are brand new is another part of my resolutions that I always try to do is I always try to put something in that I can just do in a day, you know, something that's not a long term. Well, see, goal. That's what I want to do this year. And I want you to give me some ideas. Okay, great. I want you to give me an idea, basically. And I really suggest that everybody do it. I did an unofficial poll on our Instagram. Some people thought it was too frivolous, which is fine, you know, but I do. If you really want to mm -hmm. feel like you tried something new and you accomplished something, without any other pressure to accomplish big things, I highly recommend the something you do in a day resolution. Especially if it's something you've always wanted to do, but you've never gotten around to doing, mm -hmm. you know, like one of those kind of not very big deal, but like, I really always wanted to learn how to make bread or, or something like that. You know, it's so easy to just never do it. Right. But and if you've always wanted to do it, it's great if you if you make it happen. Exactly. All right. So well, let's begin our review of what happened, what we promised to do last year last year. And we're going to start with me. Uh, so here is the first thing that I say that I intend to do in 2023. 
And I don't know if this is a resolution or just a challenge for 2023, but during the month of January, so as you hear this, this is already happening, supposedly. <laughs> because <laughs> um, <laughs> we're recording this a little early right now as you're hearing this we might have already failed by now but we are <laughs> intending to not watch television for the entire month of january now i remember the last january i remember you asking you checking in with you like how's it going um mm -hmm. so i do know that i think i think you were successful at it if i remember Yes. And let me tell you, it was a challenge because it, there's a couple things, because it wasn't just no television. It was no video, uh, no video of any kind. Mm. And so think about how much video you encounter in a day. I mean, half of social media is just instantly playing videos. Uh, so many newspapers now have videos mm -hmm. involved in their newspaper articles. There is video everywhere. You walk into a bar, there's televisions mm -hmm. on. There's just video everywhere. And so while I would say that, yes, I accomplished the goal of a no video, no TV January, I did learn how difficult it is to avoid video it in itself. So I had to be a little bit lax in that, you know, if I was meeting a friend at a bar and there was sports playing in the background and I caught a glimpse of it, but I wasn't actively watching it, I was like, I'm not counting that because I'm... You know, there's nothing I can do. It's playing behind right. him, you know. As long as I'm not staring at it, trying to see the sports score, it doesn't count, <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> and same with, like, I basically had to stay mostly off Instagram. You just cannot be on certain social medias. <laughs> Facebook doesn't autoplay video, and so you can be on Facebook. Uh, anyway, all lessons I learned. But I was surprised at, like, how um, in the early part of the month, I would feel kind of twitchy sometimes, you know, I wouldn't really have the energy to read a book, but I wouldn't at night, but I wouldn't have anything else to do, you know, and so I'd be like, what am I supposed to do in this period of time? And then over the course of the month, you start filling it in with different things. And so that was an interesting kind of learning That's curve. That's the beautiful part of it. I, I love that. And I, I feel like I could learn a lot from that with my sometimes excessive social media use, which is not actually, we'll get to this, as bad as it was, but I feel like you forget, you don't think, you don't realize when you spend two hours a day watching TV or two hours a day watching Netflix or two hours a day scrolling Instagram or whatever it is that is your particular consumer vice, you know, you don't realize, I think, until you do something like what you did, that um, there's so much that you're missing. And I mean, I'm not, I'm not down on TV. I'm not down on Netflix. I'm, you know, I, I'm as guilty as everyone else, but it's a good reminder that there's, there is so much else out there to do. It's funny too. Like, so I should say that this brings me to my first resolution of the year is that we are currently trying to do the no television, no video January again, because we just thought like it was ended up being a worthwhile practice. Why not? try to do it again. I would not say that it changed our habits in the long term. <laughs> uh, but having that month off really was good enough that we're decided to give it another go this year. And I've kind of piled onto it a little bit more in that we've also kind of added in no games on your phone as a part of it. Because oftentimes what I do, I'm a big podcast listener. And so if I'm eating lunch by myself, I'll often be like listening to a podcast, but I don't want to just be like staring at my food eating. So I'll be playing some sort of game on my phone at the same time. And so today I actually had my first experience of I was listening to a podcast I really wanted to finish, but I also needed to eat lunch before you and I talked. And so I did my first experience of like sitting there eating lunch just looking at the food, <laughs> eating while I was listening to this podcast. And in a way, I was like, well, why can't I just do one thing at once? But but another oh, part of me was like, I can't listen I have... to the podcast. I need to read a book or something. You know, I have to put the podcast off till later. These are the initial choices that we're making early on in this uh, resolution. It's uh, interesting. Derek just went out prior to the end of 2023, and he bought himself a New York Times Thursday crossword puzzle book. Because he likes doing the crossword puzzles on oh. his phone. And I'm like, well, doesn't, if you do it on your phone, isn't that defeating the purpose of what we're trying to do here? And he's like, you're right. So we went out and bought a physical book. So now he has like oh his little gosh. pencil and his little eraser. You know, he's doing it the old fashioned way. I love 
crossword puzzles on paper. I love it. I absolutely love doing them on paper. And I mean, I just like writing in pencil just in general. Yes. But um, that's great. I love that. Let's go back in time and listen to Tiffany's first resolution from last year. My first resolution is about books again. I want to read a very large number of the collector's edition books that I have bought in the last year or two since I started collecting books. It's about 28 books, and there a lot of them are hefty. A lot of them are high literature. The idea is, Katie, and this is where it gets really hard. The idea <laughs> is that I don't get to buy another book until I've done this. And so I don't get to buy any books in 2023. All right. So two promises there that you are going to read 28 books that you'd already set aside on a list and also that you were not going to buy any new books in 2023 in the effort to read through the books that you already owned. So how did we do? Okay. <laughs> um, well, partial success and also a, a major failure on the other part. <laughs> <laughs> I am obsessed with really beautiful collector's edition books that are very popular right now on Instagram as well. You can see really beautiful pictures of them from lots of book collectors. I don't go that far. I don't put them on my Instagram very often, but I love them. I just adore them and they make me happy. When I see them, they make me happy. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of trying to explain why I have this urge to buy these books and these collections sometimes the same book pops up more than one in different collections. So. <laughs> right. Claudio is kind of like, okay, it's getting to be too much. Like we've had many, many fights about it. It was kind of like past the fighting stage, past the like me hiding the book stage. And he was to the point where he was like, this is getting ridiculous. So I was like, okay, how about this? He said, you're never going to read all these books. And I said, well, I'm always reading. Like I always have one of these books in my hand. I constantly read them. And he's like, well, okay, then don't buy any more until you've read them all. That was kind of what sparked this New Year's resolution. And I was like, okay, there's no way I'm going to read them all because some of them are very, very difficult books that I didn't even put on that list of 28. Like Moby Dick and War and Peace are some of the books I had bought in recently. So I did make a list of, like you said, 28 books, uh, most pretty much all classics or modern classics, some short story collections. And... I did read a lot of books this year, but I didn't read all 28 of those books. I did. I read 42 books in total this year. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them were from that original list. I didn't count up how many, but I would say if I had to estimate, I would say maybe 15 of the books from that original list I read. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And the other books, <laughs> the other books were maybe eight or nine that I read to Aurelio, but they're, I mean, they're real books. Mm -hmm. They're not, I'm not talking picture books. I'm talking real, you know, two to 300 page books. So yes, counts. I count those. It counts. Um, so I read about, about that many of those. And then the other ones I read were books that I acquired during the year. <laughs> so you did, so did buy that new is a major books. fail. Yeah. <laughs> I checked, I went on my Amazon and I, and I went to see my orders and I lasted until the 27th of March, Katie. Hmm. And I'm proud of that. Yeah, that is good. almost a third of the year. And yeah, I was very proud of that. And I remember what happened was I saw a book that, you know, I really wanted and it was like drastically discounted. Where the book costs like 19 bucks and it's on sale for like six, you mm. know, and you're like, I can't not buy this book. <laughs> the problem was it broke the barrier and I couldn't resist after that. Um, <laughs> and so I counted up, Katie, how many books I bought in a year, not counting books bought for Aurelio, uh -huh. not counting one book that I bought as like a research book, uh, and obviously not counting books I bought as gifts for other people. Mm -hmm. So do you want to guess how many books I bought? Am I trying to also factor in what would make Claudio just lose his mind as a part of this calculation, or do I not even <laughs> worry about him? Don't even worry about him. Okay. He's not involved. How many books did you buy in a year? I'm going to go... And keep in mind, though, I was being really careful. Okay. I was trying not to. Okay. I'm going to go with 15. 
Uh, nope. I'm at 37. <laughs> I was going to guess 30. And then you were like, well, no, I was trying to be really careful. And so I was like, yeah, okay, I'll that's pass me. It. That's me being careful. And in only in only two thirds of the year. Uh, um, and, and I also got about four books as gifts on top of that. Wow. Um, so yeah, I was bad. I was really, really bad. Um, <laughs> You're going to have to slowly replace all of your books that are not a part of these collections with these collections because you're. It's not like well, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, it's not that's like what I'm doing. I mean, I'm giving away. I'm donating books at um, a pretty, a pretty good clip. I have donated probably about sixty books just this year. Books I already read and were like, mm, you know, I don't. Re- I'm not going to read this again. I didn't really mm-hmm. like it, or maybe it was just okay um books that are kind of cheap paperbacks and books that people gave me that I have no intention of reading as an expat you get a lot of books from from people who are like moving away yeah you know, people just like hey I have like 20 books do you want them right. so I have a lot of books like that and I just take them to my local library and and yeah a bit of a failure but let me add since we're kind of adding in our new resolutions as they apply to these old resolutions i will add that i would like to try to do a no buy month mm. so you have your no tv month no video month so my idea is i don't buy anything all month with the exception of food gas uh bills like the bare necessities um so no going out to dinner no alcohol not that we drink alcohol very much but like no buying books no buying clothes no buying things that are not necessary things Uh, gadgets for the house okay um and And see how that goes and are you do you have a month in mind probably february because it's the shortest (laughs) (laughs) and is it is it required that everyone in the household hold to this no buy month no 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 Okay. No, this is just a, a personal thing. Okay. All right. Um, but I'd like I'd like to try. I'd like to try just to see, you know, because I feel like I don't spend very much money. I'm not a big shopper in general, except for the books. But I do find that I like, it's always like little things cropping up, little random stuff that right. I'm like, did I need to buy this? Like, why am I? Mm-hmm. And at the end of the month, you look at your credit card bill and you're like, wow, I did spend quite a lot of money. Did I need to? Yeah. So, Okay, I love it. All right, well, let's move on to, uh, I, this isn't really a resolution, but this is a challenge that I threw down for you in the last show last year, in the resolution show last year. <laughs> and so we might as well revisit that challenge. So let's uh, take a listen. I would like to challenge you, although maybe we'll forget about this challenge. So I'll just say it and then we'll completely forget about it until okay. this time next year. But okay. in 2024, I would like to oh, challenge geez. you to read only books that have come out in the last two years. So what do you think? No, <laughs> only reading books from the last no, two no, to that's three never, years. <laughs> I could do that maybe for a month, but there's no way, there's no way I could do that for the year. First, because I'm, I am actually trying not to buy books. Like I'm, I'm, I don't have a resolution about it this year, but I, I do want to, you know, not be over the top, right? And so I'm not going to go out buying new books, right? True. And there is no real English language library where you could get some of these books for free? No. Okay. No. In fact, our neighborhood library, the English section is basically just books I've donated. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Let's move on to my next resolution that I promised to do last year. This is my resolution, I should mention, that is my get it done in a day resolution. So let's take a listen. Okay. My second one is I am going to force myself to make brioche myself and eat it. When did you accomplish this? I feel like it was (laughs) fairly recently. (laughs) Yes, I made brioche probably in the week before Christmas of this year. Uh, So yes, great kept it right down to the tail end of the year but I did it was always in the back of my mind that it had to be done and I did finally get it done I did not make it perfectly it was quite dense Uh, I think I didn't activate the yeast right (laughs) and I believe I put in one extra egg that shouldn't have been there because I read the directions wrong and it was still very tasty and it actually made very tasty French toast but 
as far as like just mm. eating it as a oh, roll, it was a little much, a little, uh, a little on the dense, okay. dense, dense side. But now, uh, is brioche I did it. sweet? I can't remember. Is it sweet? Is it a sweet bread? It's got. It's more like it got an extra egg to it. It's more eggy bread, okay. but it does kind of have mm -hmm. a f sort of sweet quality to it. Yeah, I would say it was sweeter French toast than an average French toast would be. So, mm -hmm. but anyway, mm -hmm. mission accomplished. You know, and was it challenging? Was it was it a real challenge or was it doable? It was doable. I mean, it took hours and hours and hours because you have to like let the bread rise, and but it really wasn't that hard. And I actually enjoyed getting out. A cookbook and trying something totally different and making something totally different. I mean, I cook often because, you know, I just do. Me and Derek take turns, but I cook more probably because I work from home. I wouldn't say I love cooking, but um, I liked the the process of doing it and kind of in the spirit of what we were talking about with the no television January. It, it also was a discovery process of what you could do if you were doing something different than normal. And that different from normal can result in an actual bread product was fun, you know. Do you think you'll make it again? I don't know. I mean, I'm not like a huge brioche fan. And I think me picking brioche was kind of arbitrary. Uh, but I I, uh, <laughs> I would do it again. Sure, why not? You know, I, I, it's tough for me because I like the precision of baking. But I don't really like eating sweet things. And so I get very <laughs> few opportunities to bake because I just don't want to eat anything that I make if I bake. So learning to bake bread is probably not the worst thing in the world because it has all the components of measuring things out perfectly and putting them together, but it also, it results in a product that I will actually consume. Whereas if I made a cake, you know, I might uh -huh. have some of it, but I'm going to not eat it for the rest of the week, you know. So, all right, let's move on to your next one. This is, I believe, in the category okay. that you were discussing at the beginning of this episode in of not having a plan to follow through with this idea. So here, let's take a listen. I don't feel like I do a lot of stuff just for fun, but I would like to try to incorporate more playtime into my life. All right. So you didn't really have a plan. Well... <laughs> no plan. And that that resolution is way too general. Like, I think... I it, it was kind of me wanting to go easy on myself, but making, you know, very, very general. I will say this, uh, as our listeners know, if you listen regularly to this show, I took my first solo, just for fun trip this year uh, to visit a girlfriend. And it was amazing. And I wasn't thinking about this resolution when I made the decision to go visit her. But now that I'm looking back, that weekend kind of encapsulated the kind of fun that I'm talking about. And it's not just like, okay, my kid can't be around, my husband can't be around, I've got to be in a foreign country. It's not that, but I think that it definitely, there was the fl like a flavor of the old me kind of, you know, a little more carefree, a little more spontaneous. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that counts. Sure. But um, but we did do that. I I mean, I did do that. And we also took more short trips this year than we usually do. And for me, I think I think travel like the, the thing that is the most fun to me <laughs> is traveling, I think, or one of one of the big things that I have fun doing. So I think maybe that would be some way to make it more specific to be like, OK, I want to travel more. Mm hmm. OK. All right, let's listen back to my final resolution of 2023. This last one is a biggie, but it is perhaps the most important goal for me in the next year is that I am writing a fiction book, as you know, and I would really like to have an entire draft of it done in 2023. So, Katie, how'd it go? <laughs> Did you finish? Did you finish the book? No, <laughs> no, no, no. And not even close, honestly. <laughs> um, I am not done with it. No, but I did. I am getting close to, I, I would say I'm in the final third of the book. So I have much less to go. Oh, that's than good. I, You've got to know you, the middle can be the hardest for a lot of people. Yes. Getting over that hump. Yeah. So I think I'm on the downhill slope. 
I don't really want to make any promises about when Good. it will be done. But my thought is that of this year, there's no way it won't be done by the end of 2024. That's not a resolution. It just feels like, you know, what am I doing with my time if I can't finish this book by the end of this year? I, obviously, <laughs> I think it will happen uh, this year. But I'm not going to resolve to it. But uh, I am in the final. Mm -hmm. I'm a very slow writer, I think. But I am in the final stretch. So, so there you are. <laughs> well it's not easy it is not easy and very few people say claim that it is uh -uh. so it's a creative pursuit you know it's you're, you're you're creating something out of nothing exactly which is it's hard and it's amazing and it's, it's exciting but it's also a lot of work yes it is so so much work and in all those things like very exciting very fun you know it's like creating memories that you didn't actually live is sort of what it feels like. Yes. All right. On to your final one from last year. I need to use my phone less. I want to cut back drastically. So how did it go with the uh, limited phone use? Well, Katie, I would say that like my last resolution, I didn't make a plan. And that's what I learned this year. That's what, I, that's what I'm learning right now is that if you do not make a plan for your resolution or whatever life change you want or goal, it's not going to happen. And I did not make any conscious, intentional changes like putting my phone on the console in the entryway when I come home instead of keeping it with me. Or, you know, for the first half of the year, I will say I had a very strict, like the phone is off for 12 hours a day. I, mm. I was very, very good about that. So I would look at the time that I turned it off at night. And if it was seven o'clock at night, I could turn it on at seven o'clock in the morning. If it was nine o'clock at night, I couldn't turn it on until nine o'clock in the morning. So I did do that, but that flew out of the window about, like I said, about four months into the year when all of my all of my goals and plans and habits just crumbled away. I'm not sure what happened. Um, but um, that that was good. I will bring that back because I think that that's a good thing. But I think I need I need more specific, actionable ways to keep me on track. However, having said that, I will say that I took a break from social media, for which for me is Instagram. It's really the only social media that I use. I took a break. I think it was like the last two weeks of August and the first two weeks of September, and I was surprised that I had no desire to use it. Zero. Well, maybe once in a while, like if I saw some beautiful view or some really hilarious thing happened that I wanted to share, maybe I would be like, oh, this would make such a great Instagram story, but too bad. I can't, I'm not going to do it. I never once missed scrolling and looking at other people's stuff, you know, I mean, and I, and I, I kind of enjoy that while I'm doing it, especially if it's people that I know, people that I care about, but I didn't miss it and I didn't have any desire to do it. Yeah. And yeah. I think more than using my phone less, I need to find a way to use social media more, um, just have like a limit on it. Just like, I don't know, set, a, I, there is a way to set limits on certain apps on your phone. And after whatever you say, okay, I can use Instagram for 45 minutes a day. After that, it just, it, you can't use it anymore. Mm. So maybe I need to set something like that up. All right. I like it. Your plan could also be like, Derek, my TV thing, make it for a certain period of time. And knowing that you can go back to it, you just have to, not like you have to shut it all down, but like for the month of January, my phone will only be in my hand, you know, until Aurelio's home from school or something like that. You know, you could do it just for a period of time yes you know but of course then i'll be texting yeah. you and be like why is tiffany not answering my <laughs> just i'm kidding i'm <laughs> no but it's true it's true and we all have responsibilities and you know sometimes when i'm trying to work at home like while i really was at school i'll be like okay i'm gonna put my phone in the other room i'll have the ringer on just in case you know claudia needs to and claudia will start like and i realize my gosh that man sends me like 20 text messages an hour like, like <laughs> what like why you know it's not like you can't ignore them like you can ignore the school mom chat group you can ignore certain people but like you know I can't ignore him he just can't handle it 
Um, <laughs> so, so it's, it's hard, it's hard and it's, you know, and things come up. Another thing that I've considered, which I haven't gone, I haven't made, made the step to call it a resolution, but it's something that I'm considering is having like a no tech Sunday. Mm. Like Sunday, you don't turn your computer on. You don't look at your phone. The only problem with that, well, beyond, obviously you can't get any phone calls, right? Oh, uh -huh. Like for example, my mother-in-law sometimes, she'll call me on a Sunday and she'll be like, hey, are you guys coming over for lunch? You know, mm -hmm. there's that. But the other thing is, what if we go out to a museum or on an excursion together and I want to take pictures? Mm. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I guess you don't. So, I don't know. I, I guess I know you that don't. I that's it. I guess I don't. I guess I don't. You just but... don't get to take any pictures. <laughs> I or you get a normal mm -hmm. camera and you take pictures that way, which I guess is still no, tech, I'm but bad it's at not tech tech. With a normal camera. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I already said one of my resolutions for next year, which which is the no TV January, same as last year. So that's a little bit boring. But I only have two other ones that I've identified. Okay. Uh, so one of them is that kind of, we've actually talked a lot about reading books in this episode, and I feel like we often do when it comes to resolutions. And I think a lot of people set goals about reading at the beginning of a year. I think that's a very common resolution. And I I am going to read, my intention is to read all 10 of the New York Times best books of 2023 in 2024. Ooh. And it is five oh. nonfiction books and five f fiction books. Looking at them, some of them in person, some of them are massive. Big, big books. Mm. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to read all 10. And I think it's an interesting challenge because some of them, when I read the descriptions of what they are, is a book that I would never choose to read on my own. But... At the same point, I kind of like that challenge. Like a whole group of critics sat down at a table together and went over every single book they'd written about in the entire year. And then the, they all had to debate like which one of these books, which 10 of these books are the ones that rise to the top for all of us. And these were the 10 they picked. So it feels like a good gamble to force myself to experiment with different types of literature and and nonfiction for that matter. Some of the nonfiction titles are definitely ones I wouldn't choose and just see what happens. I love that. I love that. And it reminds me of, I made a challenge years ago that um, I didn't quite complete, but I came very close, which was to watch every film that had won the best picture Oscar mm -hmm. from 1927 on. And mm -hmm. I watched so many movies that I would never ever have sat down to watch like the deer hunter and platoon mm -hmm. and you know all of these kind of like uh movies you know but <laughs> i loved i can't think of one that i didn't like i loved platoon i loved deer hunter like i really really um was like wow it's so good to reach out of your preferred genres mm -hmm. um yeah from time to time oh i love that all right so what's one of yours well, uh, besides the no by February, which let's just say that is officially as of now a resolution, no by February. Besides that, and this is going to sound really boring and I don't know, it's not very exciting, but it's what I really need to work on. Okay. I really want to be more productive with my time. Okay. Because I have the luxury right now. I mean, I look back at my life couple of years ago when I was commuting like, at least an hour and a half a day. Uh, I was stuck in an office. I had so much less time to work on my own personal projects. And I still do work for a few different people that I still have things that I have to get done. But I have much more time now to work on this podcast, my writing, my other sort of passion projects and things I'm working on than I had in the past. And I feel like I'm not taking advantage of it the way that I should be. Mm -hmm. And I especially, especially feel like this when it comes to my personal writing. So uh, you're not the only one who is not finishing your book. I, I have to be really, really honest. I've barely written this mm -hmm. year. I mean, as far as fiction, mm -hmm. I mean, very, very, very little yeah. because I've been very discouraged. And, um, so it's, it's just made it, it's just made it difficult, but, um, so my plan, because I'm not going to make a New Year's resolution <laughs> without a plan yes. this year, my plan is 
to create some kind of time blocking system where I like put it into my calendar. Uh, and it, you know, it doesn't have to be eight hours a day because, you know, I do have a little kid and, uh, you know, he gets off at school at the ungodly hour of 1 p.m. Oh, um, no. <laughs> but Jeez. yeah, that's why I don't get anything done. Uh, but, you know, I have all those morning hours. So, you know, structuring my day almost as if I were in an office, you know, and okay, I have a meeting from 1030 to 1130, but instead it's a meeting with my book and I'm working on that. Just being much, much more intentional about, about like, because so often it happens, especially on the days when, <laughs> ironically, it's almost worse on the days when my son is in school until four, which is twice a week, because it's like, my gosh, I have this huge day in front of me. Like I have hours and hours and hours. Like I have just loads of time. Like I can just take it easy today. And those are the days that I really get nothing done. I need to feel like I am accountable in some way. And not just like, okay, I'm going to take a long breakfast and then I'm going to work for half an hour. And, you know, and I have such great intentions. And so often I just, I just appoint myself. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I can't wait to hear how that goes. And if there's any way you want me to hold you accountable on this particular show, you and I can discuss offline. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I'll think about that. Okay. Uh, all right. So my final resolution is... <laughs> It's a little bit, it, this is my one to get done in a day, which I actually really struggled with coming up with an idea for what to do in a day this year. But I have decided that what I will say that one thing that's missing in my life is that I probably don't listen to enough music. Now that's not to say that I, I do listen to music the whole time I'm writing and stuff like that, but that's stuff that's happening in the background of my life. Uh, I am often lis listening to podcasts rather than music. And I don't particularly love going to see concerts in big venues because I'm such a small person. I'm quite short. And so it's often kind of just unpleasant for me to be in because I can't see anything. I'm just looking at the back of some guy's middle of his, you know, middle of his back if I'm in some kind of venue that doesn't have seating. Uh, but I did it's not that I don't like live music, you know, it's just that I never am in the circumstance to see it. And I also don't know a ton about who would be out playing in the world just around my city, who's performing on any given night. Mm -hmm. So my get it done in a day is that I'm going to try to walk into a small music venue, be it like a band playing in a bar or like we have a couple venues that are just sort mm -hmm. of like the size of a house, you know, or a small room here in Seattle, just pick somebody's name off whatever their concert calendar is, or just notice it while I'm walking by. Don't need to know a single thing about who this person is and what they're doing, and just get out, buy a ticket and go see what's up, and see what kind of an experience it is. It. And so it will be, it will have a, a lot of random chance to it, but that's my intention for the next year. I like it, I like it. Yep. So well, I you know I would I would like to end with one of your style okay. um, resolutions. I would like to do a get it done in a day, but I don't. So far, I haven't come up with anything. I did actually do something new this year that I'd never done before, or less last year. But it wasn't a resolution. I just kind of did it on the spur of the moment, which is that I made chocolates oh. uh, with Aurelio simply because last year, last Christmas, we bought a nutcracker shaped silicone mold, mm -hmm. which I didn't use last year. And this year I kind of was undo taking out the Christmas stuff and Aurelio saw it and he's like, oh, we've got to make the nutcracker cookies. And I said, well, you can't make cookies in there, um, but maybe we could make chocolates. And so I looked up um, a recipe and they turned out amazing. Okay. Right. And um, they were just just amazing. So I did do something new last year, although it wasn't a res resolution. So give me some ideas, hmm. Katie, um, of something I could do in a day. Well, I mean, my first one that I ever did was a food thing. And I think that a food thing is yeah, a really interesting thing to do. New. Yeah, eating something new. And it's a really easy one to do in a day. And it can be a kind of delightful surprise where you're like, wow, I really like that thing. Or it can be the opposite, which I had a couple of years later, hmm. which was I really hate that thing. <laughs> um, but and it's a very low lift for your first time doing it because all you have to do is find this food yeah. and consume it. So is there mm -hmm. anything that you've seen around that you have never actually tried to do anything with or eat? It could be a um, vegetable that you don't know how to work with. I mean, I'm, 
Yeah, I'm thinking fruit and veg. Um, but I feel like I if I if I haven't made it myself, I may have eaten it in a restaurant. Like, mm -hmm. um, maybe maybe a cuisine, maybe like a like an ethnic cuisine. I could go and eat at a Ethiopian mm -hmm. restaurant or something. I don't think I've ever had Ethiopian food. Oh well, there you go. I heard that it's could... good. I know there is an Ethiopian re or Korean. For example, there's a couple of Korean restaurants in Rome, and I've never eaten Korean food, so hmm. that could be something that I try. Well, I is know. there one that you're more intrigued by? Probably, probably Ethiopian. Probably. Well, should, uh, Ethiopian food is great. You should give it a try. Is it? Yeah. I mean, okay. Okay, kinda... Katie. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> okay. I mean, unless you want to like think. I'm writing it down. Okay. All right. Plus, it's a it's a night <laughs> it's out. Down, it's down there. It's a night out in a new place. Mm -hmm. You know, you can use the people mm -hmm. who the can't do it in February. That's no buy month. <laughs> That's true. So you should you could do it in January or just not forget. And you can always, you know, mm -hmm. if if the menu feels like I don't know what any of this is, just ask the people who run the place to bring you something that would be a representative of, you know, something they really love, and they'll lay it out for you. Or or the first time I ever ate it. Ethiopian food I had like kind of almost like a tasting platter where the, it was like covered in a whole bunch mm. of like little scoops of different things I thought that mm -hmm. was a really fun way to to get started yes that does sound good I'm hungry now <laughs> all right well are we leaving it there is that the end that's the this is what I, we're setting I think out that's good yeah all right well and if you that's it if you listening have a interesting resolution or something you want to, us to hold you to Feel free to send us an email, bittersweetlifepodcast at gmail.com. You can also write to us on social media. Just look for the Bittersweet Life podcast and you'll find us. Well, I look forward to seeing what happens with this show in 2024, including our big trip to Rome, which is coming up in October of 2024. We do have some spots left. If you're interested in going to Rome with us and spending an entire week in our company, just send us an email. I'll send you the details, bittersweetlifepodcast at gmail.com. And until next time, this is The Bittersweet Life. I'm Katie Sewell. I'm Tiffany Parks. Join us again. Bye. You could sponsor this show and reach educated, curious, and compassionate listeners all over the world. Our listeners are a remarkable, diverse, and engaged group of people that I am so continually impressed by. Visit thebittersweetlife.net and click support to get the conversation started.